having looked at the anti-aging movement for years, you know, I've been doing this for 39 years and I've studied a lot of different topics and, you know, philosophies and theories and even what people call conspiracy theories, which don't seem to always turn out to be true in some regard, interestingly. Um, it really seems to me that the if I had to boil down the drive for the anti-aging movement down, when I look at it, what I see is that the underpinning concept is really a fear of death. Yeah. I think that's what's really, you know, I don't see having and work with many people that have this anti-aging thing in them, right? I don't really see people wanting to live because they have so much love to give and so much more to create. It's really like they're running from death and they're desperate for the pill or the whatever they can get that's going to keep their body alive because they're afraid of death. So it, it once again, it all comes back to belief systems. So what's your thought on that? I'm just saying that what I see the anti-aging movement really is a fear of death. And I think that that's a very shallow way to go about life because it overlooks a myriad of, of much more evolved concepts of consciousness, the soul, life, God, spirituality, and the list just goes on and on, right? So how do you handle this inside of yourself? Yeah, I mean, I think you're right. I think this is fundamental. This is part of the human condition. I think at some point in our development, we're afraid of death, yeah. right? We're afraid of our own mortality. But if we don't move beyond that, if we don't, if we, if we can't open our mind to something beyond this idea of, of, of fear of death, then, then we're going to get caught. And, and ultimately, if we're afraid of death, that means we're going to be afraid of life. That's right? it. We, we cannot have both, right? So, so really, it's, it's worth meditating on death, right? It's, it's getting real with our mortality. And the more we do that, the more we accept our, and, and I think in our Western culture, we don't see death enough, right? right. We're, 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 we don't hunt. We don't look at death in yeah. the face. When, when, when loved ones die, we don't have a connection to death. And if we did, I think there's the, the fear would, would dissolve a little bit. Mm. If we got a little more intimate, if we meditated on death, mm -hmm. we thought about our own mortality, it brings us back to the same conclusion, which is I'm here now. This is precious and 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 this idea i mean it's in our language right yeah anti-aging we're, we're we're literally in denial of this process of aging yes and maybe we can get into what what i think aging is but that's a, that's a whole other thing that we're not even really uh meditating on or sitting with or, or thinking about in my view, it's a process, right? It, yeah. it, it, it is undeniable. We cannot anti-age, so to speak. We can use this language, I think, carefully, but most people are using it um, sort of haphazardly. And this idea of anti-aging is is just running away from this process that we are all inevitably going toward, which is death. Anti-aging, from the perspective you're leaning toward what, what you're describing there, is negating the concept of perpetual evolution. Right. That's right. You know, like, if you stop aging, but you don't continue to evolve, then you really have a very fixated situation. And after a while, I mean, I'm 61 years old, and I can tell you that I've reached a point where I look out at the world, it's like Groundhog Day. Same story, same silliness, you know, over and over again. You right. Like we were talking about with private coaching of clients, you see the same patterns repeating, archetypal patterns over and over, mommy, daddy, money, sex, God, drugs, money, sex, God, drugs, mommy, daddy, I don't love you anymore, blah, blah, blah. It's the same thing. And, and that that's what I think what happens when a person is aware of the body as a concept of life, but not the soul or spirit as an evolutionary process. This is right. So I think, really, we've got to realize that we're wearing the body like we wear clothes. I mean, this is as old as, you know, time as far as Scripture goes. And so I think people need to kind of wake up to the fact that what's looking through their eyes and what's breathing them is actually having an experience that is not bound by time nor space. It uses time and space as a means of experiencing the ramifications of choice without which consciousness cannot grow. Right. So we come into limitation. You know, I'll, I'll segue by saying um, you know, one of the paradoxes that I wrestled with for years was 
if God is unconditional love, which by definition means no conditions, then how did all this get here? Mm. Because that's a lot of conditions. And so I went into meditation and asked my soul to take me to God consciousness. And I said to God, I said, if you're unconditional love, then why all the pain? Why all the, the ups and downs? Why all the limitations? And I got a pretty profound answer. The answer that came back was, I create conditions so that I can love myself unconditionally. And then it, the penny dropped for me. I'm like, ah, yes, because if you don't have conditions, there's no self to love. If there's no perceptible other for God, there's no way for God to experience love. And without love, there cannot be a flow of energy and information, so there's no experience. So I found that the conditions are really actually God's own creation so that it can actually experience itself as, because the unconditional has no way to know itself. That's beautiful. And then I looked into the whole concept of Lucifer, you know, and the whole concept of Lucifer as a devil. There's a big distinction there, but but when I went, I asked my soul to take me to Lucifer, and I talked to Lucifer. I've done it many times, and and what I found is that Lucifer represents the highest form of intelligence within which what people would call the angels, which is, you know, really just a way to categorize the flow of spirit, intelligence. Angels are beings of intelligence or the flow of spirit. And I said to Lucifer, what's going on here? What, what, why all this stuff? You know, and, and, and without a long discussion, what came back to me was that God asked Lucifer to create the matrix because without the matrix, God has no means of self-reflection. So Lucifer's job was actually to create existence and time so that God could pour itself into existence, into the matrix, and have the ability to reflect upon the experiences that it had, or God itself could not evolve. So the paradox of it is, is that all the evolution of spirit is ultimately the only way God can be conscious of its own self-realization, which is what we're all doing. We're all really units of God experiencing itself under the illusion that we're not God and that we're going to die. And that, you know, you know, So I'm only sharing that with you because I've looked into these things. Well, and I asked the same question, right? Yeah. Under, and under a pretty, uh, let's say, altered state. <laughs> That's and, a good way to do it, and, um, as long as you can keep your focus. <laughs> and, and, but the, the answer I got back was, why not? And I thought, oh, that's beautiful because now I, I get to meditate on that and figure out what what to do with that. Yeah. But but ultimately, what I came to was um, that how horrendous it might be to be stuck in this existence. Yes. In this dual existence forever. In other words, if 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 death is uh, if aging is a disease and a, a disease that we're trying to cure and we can live forever, it sounds awful. It sounds horrible, right? This idea of of death or transition going back to source and this 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 temporal active duality is beautiful. Yeah. And and when you talk to people that are in their 90s and beyond that are close to the end, the the perspective is abundantly clear of 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 this I'm good. I yeah. don't, I don't need to do this anymore. Right. Like I had a good run. Yeah. But life will continue to move on without me. Mm-hmm. I I served my purpose here mm-hmm. and I'm ready. It's all good, right? Yeah. And, and so you see this over and over again. So this is why with the Human Longevity Project, I wanted to go to these blue zones and speak to these people that were in their 90s and beyond 100 from a, a, a number of different cultures because I wanted those perspectives. Yeah. And it's and it's so valuable, right, to, to speak with the elders um, because you can shortcut this process. You, you don't have to get lost in some of the stuff that we tend to get lost in as we're younger. So if we can just start to accept those that level of reality at a younger age, that we don't have to suffer as much, right? It, yeah. it becomes easier. We get to meditate. We get to play with some of these different ideas, these different realities, um, without getting lost in this idea of of death and just 
accepting it for what it is as a beautiful and necessary component to life itself. Without death, there is no life and, and vice versa, right? Yeah. So life so it becomes feeds on critical. death. Exactly. And, it, it, and this is on a number of scales, right? Internally, we need cells to die. We need parts of our tissues to die and then get reborn, right? This, mm. is, a, this is a constant theme that we see throughout mm. nature. It is, it is vital. It is critical. It's important. It's beautiful, right? And if we can start to accept that level of reality, then this gets so, so much easier.